Welcome to the You Can Be Unstoppable podcast. My name is Ewelina Szczoblewska, your host and certified hypnotherapist. In this podcast, I will share with you how to tap into the power of your subconscious mind. I intend to share with you how learning how to use the power of your subconscious mind can help you to create a successful and abundant life with ease, how to connect with yourself while fostering a healthy relationship with your body and mind. Tapping into the power of the subconscious mind will help you to learn how to manage your emotions become more resilient and present in all of your relationships. Self-love and self-worth are the keys to the kingdom of success and abundance, to happy and healthy life on your terms. Hey, 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 everyone. How is everyone doing? And today I've got an amazing guest for you, Dr. Paulette Evans, and she identifies as a process improvement project management expert who utilizes proven methodologies to effectively and efficiently solve problems at work, at home, and everywhere in between. Because this ability comes naturally to her, she launched one's efficiency experts, process engineering consultancy, focus on helping people and organizations solve complex problems, implement lasting changes, and improve the efficiency in their lives. That's amazing. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, amazing. And before we even start, I want to say happy birthday. I believe Thank you had you. birthday recently. <laughs> yes, yes, it was last Friday. And we, I had a fabulous weekend celebrating. Amazing, so happy birthday. Thank um, you. So you are highly educated, highly accomplished from what I can see. And yes, ma'am. My interpretation is that you have a lot to offer to people that you work mm-hmm. with and other women around you. And I'm curious, what does empowering other women means to you and how does that look like to you Mm -hmm. so empowering women to me means that i am always there to help them encourage them make sure they understand they can do anything they want to do that they are strong enough they are enough they are capable of many many things and i just make sure I'm, i'm articulating that and saying it to them on a regular basis a lot of women we know that we can do all these things and that we're great and we're fabulous but sometimes they just need to hear it. And so I like to reassure women that they are as amazing as they think they are, and they have no reason to doubt themselves, like ever. Mm, That's beautiful, Um, because I think us women coming together, we are much stronger. Unfortunately, that's not always always the case. Um, Uh, From my own experience, uh, (laughs) unfortunately, um, when we do come together, beautiful things happen, but doesn't always happen but mm-hmm. from my own experience I know that our past and our upbringing can have a huge impact on how empowered women feel mm-hmm. can you see that in your experience with women that you work that certain women need a bit more encouragement and they need a bit more support than others yeah, that's that's something that I actually I do a couple of workshops and they're called lunch and unlearn because mm-hmm. I want to help you unlearn those things that you have been told your whole life or you were told when you were seven or 15 because it's not helping you today. Like if it's going to hinder you from being your most amazing self, then you need to unlearn that thing. Whatever someone told you, whether it be your mom or a guidance counselor, grandmother. Uh, the thing that people always said to me, guidance counselors and teachers always told me that I was always so smart. Like I, I didn't want to be the smartest person in the room because then boys wouldn't like me or they'll feel intimidated. And I'm like, yeah, too bad. If they do, I don't need to be around them anyway. And I, I don't need to be the loudest person in the room and all these things that we as little girls that we have to just forget about. 
because it doesn't help us today. So we don't need to hold on to it anymore. But yeah, that, that happens a lot. Because I think women were told a lot of things as little girls, because either their mothers thought it was the right thing or their mothers were told the same thing by their grandmothers and so on. It was a time, I think, where people just assume women are and not, not loud and not speak their mind. And so I think nowadays you can do all those things. And I just want to make sure women know that. So I do remind them often to unlearn Forget about all that stuff you were told before, because it does not matter now. What else do you think we could do to support ourselves and other women? Yeah, oh, definitely. And this, I mean, you can preach it back to somebody as well, because if you know that this is something you told yourself, sometimes I have a friend who sometimes I know she can encourage everybody except herself. And so every now and again, when she's encouraging somebody, I say, hey, you need to look in the mirror and do the same thing. Because you are very positive, you are very empowering, you're affectionate, you love helping women be amazing. So do the same thing for yourself. And that's so powerful what you said, because I think as women, we are so very quick with helping everyone Mm -hmm. else around us, but we forget about fulfilling our own needs and desires. And again, that goes back to those stories that we heard as little girls, that we supposed to look after everyone else. And everyone else's needs are far more important in order to be a great mom, a great wife, and everything else mm-hmm. in between. And we forget that actually I'm happy and fulfilled and I can deliver so much more goodness to everyone else around me. Exactly, exactly. And that's another lesson I tell women, you have to be selfish to be selfless. You cannot help someone else if you're not 100%. You just can't. You can't pour from an empty cup. I mean, there's all these different little cliche sayings, but they are very, very true. You really do need to put yourself first because no one else will do that. And you can't be what you want to be to everybody else if you are not your 100% best self. I'm glad that you brought this up because it was one of my uh, questions I wanted you to explore. What do you mean by be selfish? Because when that's how people see when I say, well, actually, but my needs are also very important. They're very quick to judge based upon how they see the world or what stories they were told. Or maybe it's triggered is something yeah. in them because they would love to be, be be more adventurous or look after their needs a bit more, but they just can't seem to do that for themselves. So when someone else does it, it triggers them. Yeah, yeah. And people think of the word selfish as a negative term. So it has a negative mm-hmm. connotation. So when people say it, you automatically think negatively. And I try to teach them or help them unlearn that because I do say it very proudly. I am very selfish, but I'm also very selfless. And if you want to take the negative spin off of it, just think about the being on an airplane. And when they say that the oxygen mask will drop, put yours on first before you help someone else. Because again, if I am losing breath and I can't breathe anymore, how am I going to help my husband beside me? So again, it's not a selfish thing. It's a prioritization because you physically cannot help somebody if you are incapable of helping yourself. You just can't. Absolutely. And I used to say that was a joke, although I didn't realize mm-hmm. that there was an underlying beliefs about that negative connotation because when I was growing up and rebel against that social construct and the stories that I was told and Mm -hmm. I said well I want to live this way or that way because I said I'm selfish I don't want to live the way the society was trying to tell me that I should live because it just didn't feel right to me and so I had that conflict in me because at the same time I was rebelling Mm -hmm. but then I had those beliefs and stories that were that need and desire to live differently was bumping against. So I called myself selfish, which I wasn't. Now I understand. Mm-hmm. That was just me putting my needs forward because I fully agree with you that we cannot give from an empty cup. So if you don't look after yourself and you're exhausted mother that is trying to grow her business mm-hmm. and you're looking after everyone else, maybe your husband is not helping much and then you demand from yourself top performance, creativity, yeah. and it's just mm-hmm. not there because your body is exhausted. Yeah. Then you get frustrated with yourself. It's just not going to work. No, no, it ends up being a very horrible spiral pattern that happens and you end up shutting down completely and then no one gets help, you included. And and that mm-hmm. just isn't, it's very, it's not sustainable. It's a very hard place to be in when a, when a woman finds herself in that space. So it's better to prevent oh. that from happening because digging out of it is far harder. 
Absolutely. Once you get, and I think that's where the burnout happens as well, because we put ourselves through so much without actually filling up the cap. Yep. I was going to say that burnout is one of those things as well. It's hard to come back from it. So you want to put things in place to prevent it from happening. You just want to be able to monitor yourself, know yourself, watch your actions, your behaviors, your thoughts, and figure out a way to stop them from going all the way. Because once you get into burnout mode, then you're in recovery mode and survival mode, and then you really Mm -hmm. start spiraling. Absolutely. And again, that's when then those survival modes fix, and then I fully agree, and it's a lot harder to get Mm -hmm. out uh, when you burnt, literally burnt down because your body is just give up <laughs> and i've been there i've done this and i've been guilty as many people out there oh, yeah. um so would that lead or connect to something else that i know that you talk about which is prior- prioritize your sanity because no one else mm-hmm. well can you talk more about this what does that mean yeah so my thing is i, I don't do anything unless it has a positive roi for me. And that's, you know, that's not just just money. That's happiness. That's peace. That's joy. So when you are caught up trying to help everybody else or conform to somebody else's thoughts or tolerate something that someone is doing to you, if it's driving you crazy, then you need to stop doing it. Like your sanity is something you should prioritize because then you're able to make room in your mind for all the things that you need to be thinking about, all the actions you need to perform, all the tasks you need to do, all the activities you want to participate in. If you aren't thinking clearly, If you are burnout in your mind and you are feeling insane, then you're not going to be very, very productive because you can't be. So for me, I prioritize my sanity by making sure that I am happy. I'm peace at peace. I'm joyful. I am never going to be a slave to someone else's thoughts or actions because it's just wouldn't be healthy for me. So Mm -hmm. I I want people to prioritize their sanity and absolutely use the word no when you need to. If something is not going to bring you a positive ROI or it's going to drive you crazy, then the answer needs to be no. No matter who's asking for it, no matter who's talking to you, you cannot do anything positive for yourself unless you're prioritizing your sanity. Mm. So what would be your advice to other women? Because I think Mm -hmm. a lot of them would fit into this when they feel judgment. Because again, of the stories and beliefs they heard, they think they, they need to please everyone around them. Or they just want Mm -hmm. to please everyone around them because they've got other stories underlying their beliefs. Um, So there's people pleasing, there's fear of judgment and other things that may be getting in the way. And then you come in and you say, unless he fills your cup and makes you happy, don't do it. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And judgment is one of those things. It's more of us guilt tripping ourselves. And I think it starts bouncing off of us into what we think somebody else is thinking. And you can't know what someone's thinking anyway. You can't read their minds. And you can be the only person that can judge you. Like you you don't have to feel judgment from someone else because whatever someone else feels for you doesn't matter. I mean, it really isn't significant and it shouldn't be. So judgment is a waste of of energy. You don't need Mm -hmm. to judge yourself. If you're doing what you want to do, then you pat yourself on the back. Because again, no one else is doing it for you. So if you think that person is feeling judgment, then you can ask them, do you want to do this for me instead? then I can be less selfish and do something for you, I guess. But it has to be a, a, you know, give and take. I can't do all of it for me and then also help you because I'm wondering if you're going to judge me because you think I'm being selfish. I mean, like, it's just a spiral that's kind of insane. So again, you can be the only person to truly judge yourself. And I wouldn't waste any energy on judgment. If you're doing what you want to do and you're happy doing it, then all is good. There's no room for guilt. There's no need for judgment. I love what you're saying. Um, when I've learned this, because I, I struggled with fear of judgment, um, because um, so I don't know how, if you know, but I'm actually Polish. And when you grow up, all you hear is, don't do this, what the neighbors will think. <laughs> you know, going to Sunday <laughs> church, you need to your, wear your Sunday best and all those things. So I actually, the stories I heard, yeah. you have to fear the judgment of everyone around you. So when I've learned, actually, I don't have to fear anyone. I was like, oh, that is very refreshing. That's Um, right. But people will judge. That's what we do. We will have opinions. We will look at you. And like I mentioned um, earlier, someone may judge you because they're actually jealous of how you are. And they would love to be the way you are, but they just Mm -hmm. don't have that 
courage to to do it. So mm-hmm. if someone's got things like this, what do you advise to them in terms of identifying those stories that maybe you know stopping them from really fully showing up for themselves and and don't care what everyone else thinks? Mm-hmm. How do you have yeah, them? To I, I want that? women to yeah, so it's more me understanding what it is that's keeping you. Like like you just said, it's the stories, the things we were told us when we were little girls. I always want to know what is guiding you to behave the way you're behaving today. Like, what is it you were told? What is it you were taught? And then I start peeling that back to try to understand more of why you think that five-year-old you hearing that and listening is the same 40-year-old woman now that is hearing that same thing in your head and you think it applies. There are plenty of things I was told at 10 that I couldn't do at 10. I'm an adult now, though, so those things don't apply anymore. Like, you don't have to follow rules that you were following at 10 when you're 40 or 50 or even 20. I mean, things change, so your mindset has to change as you're getting older and wiser. And you have to stop doubting yourself because you don't have to answer to anybody but yourself at this point. So you don't have a mother screaming in your ear that you're talking too loud. You don't have somebody saying, no, you can't drive the car. You're an adult, so you can do adult things. And part of being an adult is saying what I want to do and doing what I want to do. And it is okay. And it only has to be okay with you. You don't have to please anyone else. If it's okay with you, then it's good. You do not need anyone else's approval to be your grown self. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. (laughs) We need more people speaking about this because I think that is a huge fear that is stopping a lot of people. I bumped into many clients that have some level of fear of judgment whether that is the husband or the mother or someone else or the neighbor or something along those lines you really do fear what someone else may think um which is amazing because i remember i've had the conversation with my brother recently when he said i admire you what you do i couldn't do it (laughs) because he fears the judgment Mm. yeah um so it was interesting conversation um, between me and him. You know, we're coming from the same household, yet we hold different beliefs. Strangely, yeah, yeah, it's true. My brother and I are very, very similar. We have our differences, uh, but we do both like literally not care what anyone else thinks. So we we do have that in common. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Um, what does living on? Um, unapologetically means to you because for me it means be true to yourself and that also means stripping those stories and beliefs and figuring out Mm. who do I want to be how do I want to live and go for it and yes sometimes we will fail and other times we will succeed Mm -hmm. but it's really living the way I want, not the way my mother told me to live, not the way the society tells me to live. And I think that takes huge amount of courage and self-trust. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to hear what does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's exactly what you're describing. It's that thing where you know how you want to show up every day and you just need to do that. And again, if we stumble, we fall, we fail, as long as you're learning from it, then it's a success. It may not be the success you planned, but it's still something that you've achieved. <clears throat> and then you can use that to go and do the other things you want to do. But it really is about living your best life, not answering to anyone and not being on society's timeline. That one is huge. I, I had a girlfriend in college that wanted to plan her wedding and children and all these things like to the T. And I was like, a lot of it, you can have aspirations, but you are not going to be able to time everything out like that. So you don't need to meet society's timeline. You don't need to be society's best. For me, and I I tell women, having it all is very, very respective of who you are. What does having it all mean to you? For me, having it all is I have an amazing husband. I have a dog. I have a house. I can do whatever I want to do. I have my freedom. To me, I have it all. I don't have children because that was never on my list of having it all. So for me, society is a little different when they define what a woman should want and what a woman's having it all means when the woman herself needs to define what it means to have it all. And you don't have to apologize to anybody for not meeting their expectation. The only expectation you should worry about is meeting your own. And that's how you get to be living unapologetically. 
And I think that's also a happy life because expectations, uh, excuse me, uh, just so if children are listening, <laughs> expectations are a bit, <laughs> because when we having expectations and we don't meet them or something mm-hmm. will not happen the way we expect to happen, that's where the frustration comes in. And like exactly. you mentioned your friend having everything planned out, I think that's when we had out that possibility for unexpected to happen. And usually, mm-hmm. in my experience, the unexpected is way better than I can even imagine. True. It says when you open up or you're open to a, a experiencing things that you didn't plan for, that is when the most amazing things seem to happen. And that's what I've realized. I, I do plan a lot. I'm a big planner, but I've had all these amazing other experiences that I didn't even plan for or didn't even think about that would drop into my lap. And so I'm always grateful. I'm always open, always looking for new opportunities, but I'm also not afraid to try something new or go off the plan a little bit if I have to. Yeah. And I think there's a key what you said, being open. Because I think when we are rigidly focus on our plan that's when we don't see other opportunities floating around we completely blocked Mm -hmm. on that but when we open to the possibility and yes having the plan an idea where we're going but not having every single step plan out because i think that's when we're blocking that energy of possibility Mm -hmm. and unexpected things to to happen Uh, certainly I can speak from my experience when I was who <laughs> in my zone of planning. Um, that's when I was blocking a lot of the things coming into my life. Um, so yes, have an idea where you're going. You do need to go. You need to. You, you do need to know where you want to go and what you want to achieve. But without a nitty gritty every minute of the day. Mm-hmm. and the tea and leave room for unexpected yeah exactly a little buffer time never hurt anybody <laughs> yeah and i also agree with you what you mentioned about children i don't have children either and society was very quick to tell me that i cannot be um fulfilled woman happy woman because i don't have children yeah. and i'm like well <laughs> <laughs> exactly that was never on my agenda and like you say you know I love traveling I love my freedom I never wanted Mm -hmm. children you know I've got much younger brother and to be honest he's my child I love that huge gap difference between us and I had to look after him from the day he was born so I've always Mm -hmm. treated him as children so when I got into my 20s and all my friends were getting married and having kids and I was like you know what? Good luck to you. I'm off to exactly. enjoy my freedom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because this is when my younger brother was kind of, you know, old enough to go to school and start to look after himself. Mm-hmm. And I regained my freedom. I was like, yes. okay, so you enjoy your life and I'm going to go off and enjoy my teenage years because I mm-hmm. didn't have them because I had a much <laughs> So I totally agree with you. And I think that's why yeah. I've always been... Um, not interested in having children and then I was in a word I don't need one I already have one <laughs> I was not my child so I'll be my brother yeah. but that's yeah that's fair thing where it comes to being courageous enough to decide to live differently mm-hmm. yeah. be different you know society I think where promotes living prescribed way mm-hmm. that you know, society tells you that if you have, you know, the kids and husband and two cars and the holidays and everything yeah. else and the mortgage and, you know, then you must be happy. But I've came across many people who have all those things and they're miserable yeah. and not happy because yeah. they may be stuck in a job they don't like, but they tied into a mortgage mm-hmm. or payment for the university loan or even um, mm-hmm. you know, their kids are at the university, so they're paying, they feel stuck. Yeah, so yeah. I think having courage to live the way you want would be my great way to approach life. Just do what you want to do. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm always, 
always wondering what, if anyone's thinking about all the things that women, our ancestors have fought for us to have. Like they fought for us to be able to vote. They fought for us to be able to drive. They fought for us to be able to go to work, to get educated, everything. They've also fought for us to have our rights. So why would you not do what you want to do when there were so many people fighting so hard to get us to a point where we can do what we want to do? Mm. So that's Absolutely. that's the only thing I can always think of. It's like, I know they fought for me to be able to do all the things I'm doing. So I'm going to do everything I can do while I can. <laughs> exactly. So to switch the conversation slightly, we live in a very busy world where our attention is being pulled in so many different directions and social media are terrible at mm -hmm. this. And how in the world so busy in a world where you want to do something for yourself, maybe you're trying to grow your business or, mm -hmm. you know, get a promotion in a, in a business, in a career that you have, how do you become more efficient without losing your sanity? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I like to utilize the tools I have at my disposal. Uh, my calendar, my phone is more of a, a worker for me. And like, I don't spend a lot of time scrolling through social media and all that. I'm looking at my calendar. I'm setting alarms. I'm setting reminders. So I use it more of a as a productivity tool than an actual phone. Um, I do carve out time for myself when I just need a moment and I don't want to think. I don't want to work. I don't want to solve anybody's problems. So I do put me time in my calendar. So I'll have a chunk, either two hours, three hours, depending on the day. Uh, I do put everything in there that needs to be done because I don't want to rely on my memory all the time because, you know, sometimes you're forgetful because we have so much going on in our minds and our lives. So I do put to-do lists in there, uh, calendar contacts, to-do lists. Like those are the things that are always up to date in my calendar and in, in my phone, in the palm of my hand. And I also have it synced with my laptop. So things are across different devices too. So then I always kind of know at my fingertips, I know I can have everything I need to make sure I get everything done in the day that I'm in or the day before, I start looking at the next day, the day before. So I know what I'm waking up to do also. Yeah, and I think I've I've had someone um, quite a while back and she was a pro productivity coach and we've discussed this um, as well that so some people would work to decide the night before what is the tasks for the next day and other people would prefer to do this in the morning and I'm over a morning person when I sit down and decide okay what is yeah. that I need to do today and I think for me and what I'm hearing you saying as well is like decide what works for you and again is being you know what works for you decide how you operate you know because we are all very different um mm -hmm. exactly and like I certainly don't work very well under pressure and I know plenty of people who know of the thing they work very well under pressure, which mm -hmm. I don't fully agree with it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is actually um some sort of trauma response to that. Um again, mm -hmm. it, it comes back to the courage and self-trust. Exactly. Yeah. And deciding how do you want to show up for yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's again, that's that that saying that, or what like I said earlier, it's your having it all is based on you. Is it's relative. <laughs> Everyone's all is not the same, and everyone doesn't function the same when it comes to being productive. Some people like a a to do list and a planner that they can write out because they remember things and they put things into action once they've written them down, and that's also fine. Whatever works for you is what you use because you're the person using it. So it doesn't make sense to use somebody else's like way of doing things if it doesn't work for you. Right. So yeah. Awesome. Um, this podcast is titled You Can Be Unstoppable. And I like to ask my guests for mm -hmm. their three top tips to become unstoppable. Mm. So first one is figure out what you need to hear or see or read first thing in the morning. Have a mantra that you either, again, a song you like to listen to, a couple of words you want to say to yourself or a poem you like to read, have a mantra every morning when you wake up and that kind of starts your day. Like that, that's your fuel. For me, mine is extremely simple. It's I am fabulous and I can do anything. Make sure you have that handy all the time. So you can encourage yourself to get up, start the day, do everything you need to do. Uh, second, don't compare yourself to anyone. You are your own elite competition. That's it. You don't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Because again, back to what I said before, everybody's all having it all is different. So you don't need to compare yourself to Becky because her having it all is not your having it all. So you don't need to compare yourself to anyone. Be your only competition. 
You want to make yourself better every day. You want to do something new every day. You want to make yourself more powerful every day. And last, don't go to bed beating yourself up. Like don't, don't say lay in bed, trying to go to sleep, going through everything you didn't get right that day. Every mistake you made that day and everything you didn't do correctly, every failure, look at it as what did I get done today? I go to sleep, patting myself on the back. I did this, this, and this today. Awesome. That's how I fall asleep. Knowing that I've lived the day to the best of my ability, did as much as I could do and wanted to do, and I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Awesome. So I love them. I really like them. They're really good advice. Um, and before I let you go, could you tell me a little bit more about your um, F1 efficiency expert component mm -hmm. that you've got? What do you do and where people can find you? Yeah. Yeah. So we are a consultancy focused on helping everyone be their most productive selves. Now, whether you're a solopreneur, you're a corporate leader, you are a stay-at-home mom, whatever you have going on, we use the same methodology with everyone we work with. And we are looking at what your processes are, what you do every day, where the gaps are and the waste. And we pull those things out, give you new processes, and then help you sustain new behaviors so you can be your most productive self. And so we are online, evansefficiencyexperts.com. Uh, my email address is paulette at evansefficiencyexperts.com. And I'm on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. My handle is at Paulette J. Evans. Awesome. Is there anything else that you would like to share before we uh, end? No, just anyone listening, just know you are fabulous and you can do anything. Mm, what a great place to finish. Thank you very much for being here. And I wish everyone a fabulous day. Thank you for listening. If you found value in this podcast, I would like to ask you to leave a positive review explaining how this episode helped you to improve your life. I ask you to do this because this will help all the people to improve their lives as well. Share and spread the love all around you. Raise your vibrations to improve your life. If you would like more transformational content like this, connect with me on Instagram. You can find a link in the description of this podcast and I'll see you over in the next episode.